everything we've talked about so far has really set the stage for understanding the role that macronutrients, but more specifically calories uh, and energy intake and expenditure play in weight loss. Let's now talk about a very specific macronutrient, which is protein and its importance in, yeah, exactly, its importance in muscle acquisition. So um, I have a saying that I'm sure many others have said, and I'm sure I'm paraphrasing it from somebody, but never in the history of civilization, I will assert, has a 90-year-old person said, I wish I had less muscle. <laughs> like it can't, they, you, they, they can't, that can't be uttered, right? If you want to be metabolically healthy, the best thing you can do is have lots of lean body mass. It is a metabolic sink is the best way to describe it. You, if you look at people who are even like obese, who are power lifters, they might have like some elevations in like blood lipids and whatnot, but usually their insulin sensitivity and blood glucose is still okay. Um, if you If you look at people who train really hard, even with excess adiposity. I mean, they see this with people who are obese, who they start them just exercising. Without exercise, one of the only things that we know of that without even weight loss improves metabolic health and substantially, really substantially. And I think I was actually on the Rogan podcast and one of the points I, I made a few years ago was I said- This was you know, the one with Dom? Yes. Yeah. So I said, you know, a lot of people get real caught up in carbs and fats and all this. And they're not even exercising. I'm like, you're literally, you're, you are stepping over dollars to pick up fractions of pennies right now. Like if you just got active and it, it's not even a high dose that's required. It's not, I mean, a high dose is great, but just going and being sedentary and walking, you will see improvements in, in health markers for, you know, a hundred minutes a week. That's it. And then obviously there's, there can be a linear effect. Um, but you know, people will look at me and I remember I, I had my blood work done a while back. Now I do have familial hypocholesterolemia, so my LDL tends to run a little bit high, but you know, people were speculating that I would have like really high inflammation because I talk about, you know, I still will eat, you know, um, probably around 70 to 80 grams of sugar a day, but I'm also getting, you know, 60, 70 grams of fiber along with that. Because, oh, your CRP is going to be elevated. My CRP wasn't hardly detectable. It, it was on the low ends of detection. And Again, that just speaks to the fact that there is a big difference between somebody who is a athlete training hard, who has a lot of muscle mass versus somebody who's sedentary with excess adiposity. It's just, it's not even comparable when you talk about like food choices and whatnot. You have a lot more you can get away with, with, with a lot of muscle mass. 